Hi everyone, we're going to start in just about 30 seconds. And I am happy to say good afternoon and welcome to this week's E-Chapter meeting. As we like to say here at NAPW, E-Chapter day is our favorite day. And considering now that we have more than 16,000 members, I think we can assume you all feel the same way. Every two weeks, professional women like yourselves from just about every industry join in the conversation. They hear what our fabulous panel of NAPW experts have to say and connect with members all around the country. Okay, by now you're probably wondering where in the world is Star Networking from this time. It's not so easy to guess when I'm not wearing a fancy Kentucky Derby hat or those Minnie Mouse ears, right? Well, today I'm actually talking to you from the Windy City. That's right, Chicago. I am at the WGN Studios right now in the makeup green room, which is actually green, as I'm going to be going live midway through our e-chapter meeting. So while I won't be able to stay with you for the entire hour today, I'm always excited to connect with all of you during this virtual event for as long as I can and from wherever I can. I'm doing the business of NAPW, so I'm sure that's what you want me to do. I've said it before and I'll say it again. NAPW is networking at its best. Well, today's e-chapter is, fittingly enough, all about how and why of networking. When is the right time to network? What do you say? Who should you be networking with? It really doesn't matter if you're a reluctant networker or someone who simply needs to improve her connection skills. We've got a panel of experts that includes two professional coaches and a marketing and social media maven each one of them NAPW VIP members, of course, who are here to answer all your networking questions. Now, before we hear from our panelists, we're going to be featuring three other accomplished women in our VIP member spotlight segment. A woman who helps other women over 50 be fabulous, now you know I wanna hear what she has to say, a licensed interior designer, and a health and wellness coach and speaker. Sounds like a pretty great lineup and I'm looking forward to hearing their personal and professional stories. Also, please be sure to participate in the polls that will appear throughout the meeting. This interactive aspect of the e-chapter meeting gives us some great insight into our attendees and your thoughts on some very important topics. They also do help set the agenda for future e-chapter meetings. But before I go, I asked Louise if I could take a little point of personal privilege since we are talking networking and I have been networking my entire professional career, so I wanted to pass along some of my very own networking tips that I've picked up over the years. I'm about to say this on the air to WGN, so I figure I might as well pass it on to my girls. Networking has always been a part of my professional life. It has impacted my career at every step along the way. Preparing and empowering women for everything that comes our way, that is the power of networking at its best. So the first thing I want you to do is to make sure you bring something to the table other than an appetite. Think about what you have to offer the people you're actually reaching out to. When you're at uh, networking events, have some clear goals. Take some time to have meaningful conversations and always, always follow up. I actually do research on some of the people that are going to be at the networking event so that I have some conversation starters when I walk up to them. Expand your network and sign up for different seminars and webinars and local industry events, just like our e-chapter here. Networking is all about relationships. It does have the power to change your life, both professionally and personally, in ways you'd never imagine. The key to attaining your goals through networking is to take these relationships, build on them over time. Remember, it's not just about what someone can do for you, it's about what you can also do for them. And that's give and take that gives you that ultimate connection. Enthusiasm, energy, excitement, those are the keys to effective networking, okay? Um, you must be an active participant in the networking process to receive the full potential of the networking moment. That means asking questions, showing interest in the other person, and listening attentively. As I mentioned earlier, it's not all about you. It's about the shared experience of building relationships with confidence. 
Also, don't forget to share your personal and professional passions with everyone that you meet. You love your business, your career, your other life endeavors. Let them shine through. You know I'm going to talk about heart health every moment I get. Sharing your interests with others allow them to see that sparkle in your eye, your enthusiasm. In turn, they'll share with you, which means you're on the road to creating a lasting connection with someone who could really change your life forever. Building relationships means that you are building a network with some of the same people on a regular basis, like I bond with you guys. Well, when you're meeting someone for the first, second, third time, make sure your appearance reflects your professional goals. What you wear, how you carry yourself, really will reflect positively on you. I always say, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That'll help people get to know the real you. And as your network of supported professional women expands, you will be amazed at how they will support your career and business endeavors. Maybe there'll be times when you have doubts about a goal or questioning or business practice. That's where your network will come in. These are the women who understand you because you've shown them your enthusiasm. And there'll be some good pick-me-ups of advice and comfort, especially when things get tough and you get into a setback. Why? Because you've built real relationships with them. I know this. Trust me. I've seen it firsthand at our NAPW local chapters and all the professional women at NAPW. And my very last tip, you never know who you're going to meet. So always have plenty of business cards with you, or better yet, have that technology where you can just transfer the contact right on over. People are everywhere, which means opportunities are everywhere. All right, that's what I got. It's time for me to turn this meeting over to someone else who loves the e-chapter as much as I do. Louise, over to you. Thank you, Star, and thanks for the warm-up. Um, our e-chapter is NEPW's unique online networking platform with events held bi-weekly on Wednesdays at either noon or 4 p.m. Eastern. NEPW e-chapter only hosts our members nationally, inviting them to be spotlights, panelists, and guests to network with each other throughout the event. We encourage you to carve out the time and keep coming back to our e-chapter because of its ease and ability to network from your office, while on the road, and even from the comfort of your own home. So mark your calendars for every other Wednesday and look out for the email invites and promotions on social media. As always, I'd like to welcome our NAPW members, especially if you're joining us for the first time today. We also have in attendance today some additional corporate moderators to assist you or just chat with you along the way. They are Talia Cardiello, Director of Membership Services, Samantha Bacorny, Local Chapter Manager, who'll do her best to offer technical support if needed, and Dana Angel, Graphic Designer and Digital Media Manager, who'll be live posting throughout the event on NEPW's Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, encouraging you in the chat room to share our posts on your social media. You'll also see several times during the event a poll pop up on your screen. Please take a minute to answer the questions as we'll share the results during the panel discussion. The agenda for our event today is that we'll be showcasing three VIP member business spotlights who will have three minutes each to share their expertise before we invite our panelists on to discuss our topic for today, networking how and why. So for our first spotlight today, I'd like to introduce Gretchen Asher, founder and CEO, BFAB Revolution and NAPW Portland, Oregon chapter president. BFAB Revolution is positioned to be the premier online community for women aged 50 plus. Members of the BFAB Revolution community have access to monthly feature experts, physicians and other health professionals and industry insiders sharing the most current advice via online webinars on topics that are uniquely important to women of a certain age. Topics like menopause, finding passions after decades of raising families, elder care, finances for women over 50, career growth and change, just to name a few. BFAB Revolution is dedicated to inspiring and empowering women age 50 plus to be fabulous, not fabulous. Good afternoon, Gretchen. Welcome as our first spotlight uh, for today's event. Hi, Louise. Hello, ladies. Hi, Star. Thanks for this opportunity. This is great. And we have our Portland chapter meeting tonight, which I'm really excited about. Um, my life has transformed. Uh, a year ago, I never anticipated that I was going to be a crusader for women age 50 plus. I just thought I was going to be 50 plus. And um, 
about a year ago, last summer, uh, I was at an all women's um, business conference and I had an opportunity to sit down with a branding expert and at that time I was uh, doing R&D and manufacturing uh, an anti-aging skincare line and so I, I jumped at the chance to sit down with a branding expert and my skincare line was called Be Fab Skincare, fabulous. And he told me that um, the term fab or fabulous is not appropriate for women age 50 plus, that it's irrelevant. I was stunned, as you can imagine, because I do believe we are fabulous, not fabulous at 50 plus. So I thought about it, I researched for almost a year issues that women face who are 50 years and, and above, and it started for me putting together BFAB Revolution. And I am about to open the doors. Uh, I have lined up fabulous uh, speakers, doctors, as Louise said, to talk about menopause, um, authors and speakers, and TED Talk folks to, to really uh, share information and, and help us stay fabulous. Uh, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, I will be uh, launching, I, I'm doing all the webinars now, and I will be launching in the next month or two, I think. And uh, just, just can't wait to get this out there to really empower and support women age 50 plus. A couple of examples, uh, a woman I know in uh, Cleveland, a uh, big corporate HR gal, um, she really took time to get in touch with her passion uh, after age 50 and she left corporate America and now she consults to women and helps them with career changes uh, and she is hugely fulfilled more so than her multi-decade career so it's, it's very exciting to see and I do have an offer for my NAPW sisters um, if you want to uh, join us and and see what we're all about uh, I will be offering uh, $20 a month for however long you want to stay members. When I open the door, I'll probably open at around $30 to $40 for the monthly enrollment. But I have that offer for my NAPW sisters um, at, at a lower rate and uh, would love to have you come on board and join. And you can find us at BFABRevolution.com. Thanks, Gretchen. Well, I'm turning 50 in about six weeks, so I'll be looking into this because I certainly want to uh, be fabulous at 50. <laughs> oh, you are fabulous, no doubt. <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, I invite you to go over to the chat room and continue the conversation there Absolutely. with the attendees. Thanks a lot. Uh, for our next spotlight, I'd like to introduce Amber Claw, owner and licensed interior designer, A Claw Interiors, founded in 2012. Amber is an NCIDQ licensed designer and member of the American Society of Interior Designers, ASID. Amber's goal for ASID is to advocate the profession of interior design and, and continue to further develop her knowledge and expertise in all aspects of the industry. She's held several speaking engagements on the practices and principles of design and was named NEPW's 2014 Women of the Year, Woman of the Year. Her passion for helping other business women is the reason she currently serves as the Vice President for the NAPW. Orlando chapter. Amber has had the pleasure to work with several NBA and NFL athletes, elected officials and Disney celebration resorts to make their dream design dreams a reality. Amber's success has been showcased on several design shows and renowned media outlets like HGTV, House.com, Fox 35, Good Day Orlando and more. Good afternoon Amber and welcome as our panelist, as our spotlight for today. Amber, are you there? Yes, hi everybody. How is everybody doing? Are we on? You are. Go right Fantastic. ahead. Fantastic. Well, hi, my name is Amber Clore. Um, as, as Louise introduced me, thank you so much. I am a licensed interior designer with over 10 years of experience in interior design. Um, and that is exactly it. I love helping home and business owners make their design dreams a reality. 
Um, I'm hanging out with you all from Central Florida, which is where my design firm, A Clore Interiors, is based out of. Uh, we have beautiful home decor, accents, and a custom line of all natural uh, body products here. And it's also the home base for my team and a playground, as I say, for myself and my designers with every design element you could have at your fingertips. Um, I knew that I was going to be an interior designer from a very, very young age uh, when I discovered myself rearranging my room instead of being outside playing with all the other children. Um, so I took a high school elective and I started my first design job when I was 15 as a junior uh, design to the junior design assistant. <laughs> and I, I went to FSU, I obtained my design degree and started working directly in the industry. I desire to do it all. So we, as an interior design firm here, we practice commercial, hospitality, and residential interior design. So we help homeowners really create uh, their design dreams as they come true. Um, I wish I could see everybody um, on this seminar because I would always ask to raise your hand if you know what an interior designer does, if you know the difference between a decorator and an interior designer because there is one. Um, I've taken the NCIDQ license, which makes me um, able to do practice commercial and hospitality and know the safe and healthy health of a welfare of a space. So I founded Aclor Interiors in 2012, and I contribute a lot of my stuff, success to what we're talking about today, which is networking and really getting to know other like-minded business owners to enhance their space and learn more about what makes their brand profitable. Uh, being the vice president of NAPW has been a large part of my growth. I love this organization. It's really helped me create a niche and being able to help home and business owners create an environment that promotes health and well-being while being aesthetically pleasing to the, to the eye. I do think it's important to have an attractive and beautiful space, but that is the cost of entry. We think that a space should promote healthy living. Does it harness productivity? Does it breed creativity? Can you uplift our spirits? And does it favor growth and prosperity? As a designer, all of these things are thought of when we curate a, curate a space. Uh, one of my favorite principles is balance. Uh, when I'm working with business owners, I always want to find out if their desk has well-balanced energies. So we use the, prop, the principle, the old ancient uh, Chinese practice of feng shui to figure out if the space is harmonized. So did you know that you can put um, a, a plant in the top left corner of your desk and it's going to promote wellness, it's going to promote prosperity, and you're going to get a little bit more money, which is good. Um, right next to that is the reputation zone, and you can put your uh, a flame there or a fire there, and that's going to enhance that area. So if you take a look at our latest blog post, I've got a lot more information there for you, um, how you can enhance the chi of your desk and set it up for success. Um, those are just a couple examples what an interior designer can do to promote um, your space and health, health and wellness. So check our website out. It's www.aclorinteriors.com. In addition, I'm offering a 20-minute hangout with all NAPW members and we just need a little inspiration for your home or office. It would be a great opportunity for me to, for you to pick my brain about your space. Thank you, Thank you, Amber. Thank you so much for sharing your design tips. I'm about to put my little plant that I moved from the left top side of my desk to the right, and I'm putting it back as soon as I'm done with each other. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your dedication as a board yeah. member to the NAPW Orlando chapter. It's wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You. Last but not least for our spotlights today, I'd like to welcome Shonda Keynes, um, who is a fitness expert and founder of Awaken Your Wellness. She is a walking testimony to her program after shedding 90 pounds through exercise and diet and through this became passionate about helping others to achieve their wellness goals. Proudly vegan-powered, Shonda ignites audiences with concise strategies and models geared to expose, address, reverse, and harvest breakthroughs for groups and individuals. Over the past five years, Shonda has worked, with indi worked individually and with organizations to help empower women in her local community and online. She holds an MPA, Masters in Public Administration, and a Weight Loss Specialization and Fitness Nutrition Specialization certifications. Shonda is also a certified personal trainer from the National Academy of Sports Science and holds a group exercise instructor certification. She also has her own weekly 30-minute radio show called Awaken Your Wellness with Shonda and this Saturday she'll be having a psychotherapist on discussing women and mental health. Hi Shonda, great to have you here today. Shonda, come online and join us. Good afternoon everyone and welcome. Um, thank you so much Louise for that beautiful introduction. Good afternoon everyone. 
My name is Shonda, and it is a pleasure to be on here today as a VIP um, highlight. What, what a beautiful honor. I am um, Shonda Keynes. I was born and raised in the U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Thomas, and I birthed my company, Awaken Your Wellness, after struggling for many years with my uh, weight. I recall as a child going to the, the gym with my neighbor from, you know, from middle school, trying soup, cabbage diets and all those different diets many of us are aware of, and nothing really took the weight off and or kept it off. And it was not until I realized that I had to release whatever was weighing me down in order to move forward in becoming um, healthy and whole. So in 2004, what I did was I pretty much faced and addressed childhood trauma, and from there I was able to become a more assertive young lady and finally, once I finished grad school, I was able to lose the weight and keep it off. So I lost the weight in 2007, and God's willing, this fall it will be nine years um, keeping off 90 powers, um, 90 pounds, excuse me. And my goal right now is to empower other women to do what I did. Look within you and see what places, things, um, and circumstances are truly weighing you down reveal what they are, expose what they are, address them and seek their help and become whole. So my goal is to help them to go from being um, broken and overweight, if they are overweight, to being fit and whole. And I do that through coaching, workshops, boot cops, um, in-home working, in-home cooking sessions, guided grocery tours, anything you could think of, um, I do as it relates to um, wellness wholesome wellness, holistic wellness. And one of my um, most recent success stories was having my fitness director where I work at the local YMCA part-time come to me and said, we have a young lady that actually works at the Y that said she's unable to go past 13 miles. And I laughed and I said, why not? I'd like to meet her. And I was able to have a conversation with her and tell her everything begins and ends in her mind. And needless to say, she became a marathoner like myself and now she is healthy, and she even inspired another one of our coworkers to start running as well. So that is my passion. I was able to find my passion and my pain to be able to empower women to just become free, just become fluid and free. And being a part of NAPW, I love the, the, the organization and what, uh, what it stands for. And I definitely want to leave you guys with five tips. Five things that I'd like for you guys to monitor. I'd like for you to monitor your sleep. I'd like you to monitor your stress. I'd like you to monitor um, your sugar, your sodium intake, and it's so imperative as women for us to strength train as we um, become older. It's so important. And also as a giveaway, and I thank you to you guys, it's to pretty much offer you guys 20 minutes with me um, and it goes out to the first 20 women that send me an email, and I'll be able to do that complimentary on behalf of NAPW. You just have to send me an email at info at awakenyourwellness.com. Thank you, Shonda. Uh, powerful story. I uh, invite you as well to go over to that chat room, keep sharing with those ladies, and uh, wonderful tips. Um, Thank you. Anyway, uh, it's time. Um, I thank all my spotlights today for coming on and for sharing their professional expertise. Um, but it's time now to go over to our program and move on to our panel discussion. So I want to invite our first panelist to come on and welcome her, Marty McEwen, your Stage Fright coach and the founder of the Stage Fright Cure and Fearless Powerful Speaking Trainings. Marty is a longtime therapist and coach whose professional experience led her to discover a unique method for being free of any form of stage fright, performance anxiety, test or competition anxiety, or fear of public speaking. Marty's Stage Fright Cure features the rapid relief process, an original mind-body technique that literally eliminates the psychological and physiological causes and symptoms of stage fright. Her highly successful approach will also maximize your natural experience of confidence and focused energy so you can show up strong and do your best in any performing situation. Her specific propriety techniques are ones you can learn to use anytime, anywhere and find them invaluable in other areas of your life. 
With over 20 years of experience, Marty offers her techniques in the book and video program, The Stage Fright Cure, which is available on her website. She provides private coaching in person in Seattle or using secure online video conferencing. She has created the live Fearless Powerful Speaking trainings offered publicly and in-house and is available to speak to your group or conference. And if you're in the Seattle area, check out the free Fearless Powerful Speaking meetup groups at meetup.com. Good afternoon, Marty. Wonderful to have you on the panel today. Hi, Louise. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for that introduction. And I would like to have a shout out to everyone from the Seattle chapter. And we are so into networking. So it's just perfect that we should be doing this today. Thank you. Wonderful, Marty. Great shout out. Um, for our next panelist, I'd like to welcome to join us Dawn Stebbing of Dawn Stebbing LLC, the executive presence coach, a certified image consultant professional speaker, member of the Association of Image Consulting International, and the president of the Chicago chapter. She works with corporations and private clients on optimizing their executive presence, first impressions, nonverbal communications, interpersonal skills, and their personal brand. Dawn helps professionals bring forth their... Dawn, if I can ask you to mute yourself while you're preparing. Uh, thank you. Dawn helps professionals bring forth their confidence, clarity, control, and power for success. As a leading executive presence expert and image consultant in Minnesota, Dawn knows that being perceived as a leadership as leadership material is essential to being promoted in leadership positions. Masterful at utilizing the power of perception, she can strategically teach you to influence an outcome or experience. As an executive presence trainer, she understands there is so much more to leadership than a title. Elevating your presence to produce more confidence, poise, communication, interpersonal skills, and appearance are some of the major components to expanding your influence. As an executive presence coach, image advisor, and branding specialist, Dawn is dedicated to improving personal credibility and overall influence, both, both personally and professionally. Good afternoon, Dawn. So glad to have you here today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Um, and last but not least for our panel today, I welcome Leanne Ferry, MPA CPC, founder of Courageous Mindset. Leanne is a certified global women's empowerment coach, empowering her women's clients to expand their thinking, focus their efforts, and develop courage to act outside their comfort zones, creating the lives they want now. Leanne has a specialty in helping women prepare and practice for speaking up for what they need. Up for, up for what they need, want, desire, and believe in, as well as helping them to develop the confidence, courage, and communication skills to handle high-stake encounters in their personal and professional lives. Her clients develop clarity, set goals, work on adopting success mindsets, and get into sustained action on their goals and dreams. Leanne, originally and currently from California, has traveled and lived around the world, from Alaska to Texas, and recently is an expat from four years in China. She has over four years of experience in professional coaching and over over 20 years of experience in training, cross-cultural communications, community and multiple stakeholder relations, program management, and public speaking. Leanne has a master's degree in public administration from the University of Alaska and a bachelor's degree in biology from the University of California. Good afternoon, Leanne, and ladies, it's a pleasure to have you all here today on the panel. Hi, everyone. Wonderful, you're all here. Uh, Dawn, you can unmute yourself. Um, it was just a little noisy as you, was get, you were getting yourself prepared there. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so let's discuss networking. Uh, we know there's lots of it going on out there, but what's its true value? And are we doing it right? Some of the key thoughts and questions I'd like us to cover today during our conversation are who to network with, what to say, where to network, the right time to network, how to network, and why we should be networking. So based on the above, as we move through the, uh, your areas of expertise, let's discuss communication style. So for our first question, ladies, please share with us what you see as three key elements to successful networking and why you choose these as your top three. Let's start with Marty. Absolutely. Hi. So this was a no-brainer for me. This was so easy for me to come up with. The first is genuineness. One of the things that I uh, appreciate when I'm networking or someone's networking with me is that they really are talking to me person to person as though they're having a conversation with me for real. Not a conversation that has an agenda behind it or has some kind of sales technique that you can feel or they're going to go through me and check me off their list, but really are slowing down to have a genuine conversation with me. That's number one. Number two 
is listening. You know, we always are taught to uh, have an elevator speech. And I am so against elevator speeches. What I am for is conversation starters. If I go into a networking meeting or just a casual situation, and I say, people ask me what I do, I say, well, I help people get over their stage fright and fear of public speaking. That's all I say. It's not an elevator speech. And everybody's got a story about that. Everybody's got something to say about that. And it just starts the conversation, which allows me and them to go into a, just a, a nice conversational, genuine conversation. And the third is something that Star alluded to, which is follow-up. And there's, to me, there's two sides to that. One is, we want to do business with people we know, like, and trust, as everyone says. And trust is, do what you say you're going to do, when you said you were going to do it, the way you said you were going to do it. And that's what engenders trust. And that follow-up is partly, don't promise to do things that you know you're not going to be able to, and follow up and do what you said you were going to do. So genuineness, listening, and follow up. Those are my choices. Wonderful, Marty. Uh, that's great. I don't know if your phone was ringing in the background there. <laughs> uh, maybe if you, while we go on to other panelists and hear their three points, you would like to go mute that. Uh, it was breaking up what you were saying. We obviously want to hear you loud and clear as you're on our panel today. Um, Dawn, um, come on, uh, unmute yourself and come on and share with us some of your three key elements. Yes, thank you. Well, one of, the, um, one of my key elements is I love to meet people. I'm a people person. So the reason to, for me to go into networking is to meet people and find out what their expertise are and share my expertise at the same time. Uh, having a conversation with someone other than the people you work with is in learning more about uh, other people. For many years, I've been networking, and it wasn't the easiest thing I've ever done in, when I first started. So I got better as I moved on. Uh, you want to get exposure, one for yourself, um, and um, one to I obviously get to know other people again. But um, the only way you're going to get exposure for your business is to get out there and meet and greet people. And then the third one is, you. Um, Star alluded to this earlier too, is be interested in other people instead of just being there for yourself. And I love what Marty said about being authentic. If you're true to yourself, people can see that. When you're not, people can read you easily. And it also puts up a block towards them. So be interested, not interesting. Thanks, Dawn. Uh, we're having a little panel issues today. Um, I, actually, Dawn, if your mic is knocking against your necklace, if you can remove your necklace, that would be great. Uh, again, it's interrupting hearing you. So great points, being genuine, listening, following up, learning about people. Um, Leanne, come on and share with us. Unmute yourself and share with us your three uh, elements, to, key elements to successful networking. Great. <clears throat> Hi there, am I coming through okay? I was having a little bit of difficulty on my end. You're loud and clear. <laughs> okay, great. So these are my three trifecta top uh, networking elements, okay? So the first one, again, people have alluded to it. It's about relationship. You really need to adopt the relationship mindset. I talk a lot about mindsets. Networking is a win-win and an ongoing relationship building process, okay? It's not an opportunity to sell something and to get a job. We have to quit thinking about it that way. It's important to remember that successful people hang out together. They develop genuine relationships with each other. Over time, they help each other. And the key word here is over time. So one of the best things you can do is to quit seeing networking as a necessary evil and start seeing it as an opportunity to build necessary and meaningful and genuine relationships. And that's important because at one point or another, all of us, we let our negative attitudes about this really hold us back and limit us. So if you keep telling yourself that it's about selling yourself, then that's all it'll ever be. So um, see it as genuine opportunities, and many, oper many doors will start to open there. So my second thing is personal presence. This is all about how you show up. I think it's important to show up with confidence and humility. 
Know that let your strengths fill you up with confidence and know at the same time that you can learn something from every single other person you meet. And this is important because a lot of people think that confidence and humility don't go together, but I think they do. I absolutely believe it. So develop these two things in yourself at the same time, both confidence and humility, and that'll make you an irresistible magnet, I think, to other people. They'll love to be around you. They'll want to talk to you because your confidence will project out. They'll, they'll notice that, and then you help them feel good about themselves as well. So how amazing is that? And my last thing is be curious. You need to be curious about other people and express it through excellent communication skills. And in particular, that's great active listening. If you don't know what active listening it is, please look it up. It's a particular skill. Um, and be curious and ask open-ended questions and be direct about, um, about who you are uh, and be assertive in expressing yourself. So those are my three networking superpowers. Thanks. Leanne, great. Well, you're certainly working it as you're speaking it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Well, we just ran our first poll question and we asked um, our attendees how often they network. And interesting, the three options were weekly, monthly, or hardly at all. And it was pretty even across the board. Uh, around 35% of our attendees answered to each of them, uh, either weekly or monthly or hardly at all. Um, I know that we'll, we'll get to this a little later and we'll talk about what that sort of, uh, what the magic number is and how often we should be networking. But I'd like to move on and ask Marty, um, you know, that we know that fear and security can play a big part, as, as Leanne was talking about showing up with confidence to networking events, but it can be disabling to some of us um, and, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, a disability in being able to shine in the room and deter people from even showing up to networking events. What advice would you give to anyone on how they can use the stage fright to propel them in making decisions and get the best results? <laughs> Use your stage fright. Eh? Well, stage fright to me is fear. And I don't know that you can use fear. However, if you have stage fright, it's an, it's an animated, it's an excitement in the most general way of thinking about excitement. Now, can you just by saying, be excited instead of fearful, just turn it around just like that? I don't know that that's really possible. I think for some people it might be, and for some people that was, it would really be asking a lot. It's just to say, oh, I'm excited, when really I'm scared to death. <laughs> so stage fright, I don't think, really is helpful. But stage flight is what I'm trying to get people to get to, where you feel like you're excited, you're focused, you're, your intention is clear, and you start whatever you're doing, and you stay with it, with confidence all the way through to the end. Whether it's a small conversation, or a performance, or a speech, whatever it might be. Now, uh, Dawn mentioned the word confidence, which is something that I have a special definition for that I'd like to share, which is unimpeded energy. Confidence to me is unimpeded energy. And stage fright, on the contrary, is impeded energy. And I'd also like to go back to something Shonda said which was when she, she could clear up within herself the traumas and the impeded energy of the past. She could then go places and do things that she didn't think she ever could do. And the same is true with stage fright. Now, you, you made a list as, uh, in my introduction of the, the applications of the stage fright cure, which is speaking and in the arts and so forth and so on. And networking is one of those. You don't really think of stage fright as being something that's related to networking, but as you said, that fear and insecurity really does amount to uh, a form of stage fright. So what I would like to do is to share some tips with people about how to calm down that physiological response. It's rooted in what uh, I've co-developed with a colleague and friend of mine called the rapid relief process. But here's part of it. If you want to calm down your autonomic nervous system, you can take the insides of your wrists. And you can all try this. You can all try this. Take your wrists and match them together 
and then put them right on your belly, on your waistline or even below. And as you're doing that, you breathe in through your nose in a short in-breath and then let it out very slowly through your mouth. Just like that. And keep doing that. What you're doing is you're matching acupressure points here in your wrist and you're hooking that up to a central point in your body that really grounds you. And at the same time, you're activating the vagus nerve, which slows down your autonomic nerve system and will calm you down. So take that tip. There's lots more, but that's a start. <laughs> Marty, so before walking into a networking event and having those jitters, um, yes. so are we doing this exercise before we just before we walk in, or is it something that you could do hours before I mean how this exercise I mean how does it long does it stay yes. with you? Yes. Now the rapid relief process in, in its entirety is five exercises that are that are a composite of okay. approaches you may have heard of energy psychology, EMDR, etc. This particular exercise is great for a momentary slowdown of that uh, inner the inner jitters. It could work definitely in the moment but you might be surprised that it actually has carryover because you're pairing a situation where ordinarily you'd be nervous with a slowing down of those symptoms. And it often teaches you a new way of being that lasts. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, you know, we're, today we're covering a lot of stuff in a short time. We're talking about how to be mentally prepared and also to be physically prepared mm -hmm. for networking and to be able to put your best foot forward. Um, Leanne, in your business model, you use the word courageous. What results have you seen with some of your clients that have used your philosophy and guidance through networking to grow their businesses? Hi, yeah, so great. So I'm going to tell you about uh, the courageous mindset in the context of networking and then tell you about what my clients say they get out of working with me. Um, and it's a lot around communications, which of course is the driving force for networking. So the courageous mindset is a very purposeful process and it's simply this. Figure out what you want, figure out what you need to do to get that, and figure out who you need to be to have that. All right, so in this case, figure out what you want. Let's say um, it's be great at networking and building your win-win relationships. Okay, so now what do you need to do to get that? And for example, that might be I need to be attending one networking event per week. And maybe I need to be committing to reading a great book about interpersonal communication skills or networking. Okay, that would be the do. Then you need to figure out who you need to be to do that and have that. And this is, I got to say, this is where it gets really interesting, right? Because this is all about you internally. This is about your beliefs and your attitudes about networking. And it's about what's motivating you and what's holding you back from being you in this context. Um, and this part of working with me is really about creating awareness and replacing the mindsets and beliefs that you have that hold you back with new ones that serve you in meeting your goals in this case around networking. So the, the idea here really is that the way we think about things and ourselves either limits us or expands our possibilities and really it's your choice. Um, and then finally you make a plan and a commitment and you start taking baby steps toward that networking goal um, even though you're afraid because it's outside your comfort zone and whenever we go for something outside our comfort zone there's fear. So my clients prepare and practice with me and take one small step at a time um, even though they have some fear on board. So they're preparing and practicing and getting out there and doing what they need to do with that fear and that is the courageous mindset. And my clients say that when working with me they've had a few specific kinds of successes so I want to just close with those. They tell me they have new confidence and ability to show up the way they want to in communication with others. They tell me that they have new mindsets and attitudes now um, and that now their ideas and needs matter as much as everyone else's. Uh, they tell me they have new awareness of themselves and of others. They tell me they have new skills and confidence from practicing the new ways of thinking and new ways of being in the safe zone of the coaching conversation. Uh, and then they've gone out in the world and practiced it little by little and achieving more and more success around it. They also say that regularly meeting with me and working on their courage provides them with a level of momentum and accountability and follow through that they didn't have before. So through the coaching and through this model, they basically are becoming the women they want to be. Hmm.
Thanks, Leanne. Yeah, we have to practice it. I mean, we're not going to learn if we don't put ourselves out there and even have those cringeable moments where we walk away and go, oh, ouch. But we go back and we know better next time. Um, you know, we're running a lot of polls today. Uh, we, have a, uh, we just ran our second one. We asked if uh, our attendees thought that networking was valuable. So we're glad to say that 84% said definitely, and uh, about 16% said sometimes, and nobody said never. So that's good. We're all <laughs> mostly on the same page here. Um, and I just want to share a little piece of information. Um, ABC News reported that 80% of today's jobs are landed through networking. So networking is an incredible um, uh, piece of, um, you know, we, it's a craft that we need to learn. We need to be able to do this in our professional roles, so and we need to learn it, and we need to master it, and it's only through practice. And that's why, you know, and APW, here we are. This is a networking platform. We have in-person events for a lot of our members, which we really encourage our members to show up to and really use that opportunity to practice some of these skills that we're sharing today. Um, thanks, Leanne, for, for your information. Um, Dawn. Um, you've spoken on many styling topics and some that certainly pertain to networking, for example, how to work a room, business dress, business image, dress for success, and body language, to name a few. Um, share with us some key elements that, uh, to take into consideration when dressing for a networking event and the impact you can have when you walk into a room uh, when you're dressed correctly. Great. Uh, first of all, one of the things that you really want to do is you, you want to know the dress code of the event. So when in doubt, you want to ask, and who to ask is maybe call the facilitator and ask the facilitator, you know, what's the dress code? And so you're addressed appropriately. Then once you find out what the dress code is, then dress appropriately. When, you take the, when you're dressed appropriately, you take the focus off of you and you're not fiddling with your clothes, so then you can put the focus on your message. What is the goal? What is the outcome that you want when you go to this event? Uh, dressing appropriately, uh, what I always tell my clients is wear something that makes you feel great. Um, something that is colorful, that resonates with your, your skin color, your hair color, your eye color, and your red, your red undertones. Something that blends in, that stands out. But something that makes you look great, so when somebody comes up to you, they look at you and go, wow, you look fabulous. Not, wow, I love that color. There's two different scenarios there. When somebody um, comments on your clothing, you're, you know, it just puts a great smile on your face, and then you want to connect with them. It's like, hi, how are you? Um, introduce yourself. So dressing the part is huge. A lot of us um, kind of want to hide and we hide behind our clothes all the time so we don't put a lot of thought into what we wear so I would suggest putting a lot of thought into um, how to dress and be noticed when you walk into the room people want to see who you are shine you're there for a reason make sure your goal is you know your goal in mind is to meet other people be attractive so people can will come up and, and shake your hand um, I've, I've seen many people walk into a networking event and, and I don't know, maybe this has happened to you, not you particular, Louise, but other people out there, that you walk in and you go, ugh, I didn't put the right clothes on today, or ooh, I wish I would have wore something different. I've done it, it's happened to me, uh, but know your, know your audience, know your dress code, and you'll feel a lot more confident, credible, and you'll exude a little more charisma about yourself. Thanks, Dawn. Yes, I mean, I, I think that understanding the market and where you're, what, what you're walking into, uh, demographic, age group, uh, professional type. I mean, obviously going to a lawyer's event might be different than going to some startup that's 30-somethings uh, in the tech business, more casual. I mean, New York, we like to wear a lot of black. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, let's talk just quickly about color and the impact of color and how people, because there's a lot of psychology behind color and how people, what people feel when they see color. So just share some tips about that. Yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, I do uh, talk a lot about black. And black, we tend to like, I live in Minnesota, so I'm along with you there in New York. 
we do wear a lot of black here too. When I, I just was at a networking event last Friday and I can tell you that the majority of everybody in that room had black on. And one, we like to blend in. We, like, we don't like to be noticed. Black hides a lot. It's got its negative connotations and it's got its positive connotations. But adding a little spice of color actually brings color to you. It brings life to you. Um, color for me makes me smile. It makes me energetic. It makes me alive. I want to I wanna be noticed because I'm there to get noticed. So pop a color. If you love black, then pop it with a color. A necklace, some earrings, a scarf, maybe um, a camisole underneath. Always pop it with a color, but a color that looks great on you, not a color that just um, overdoes who you are. So, in other words, a fuchsia pink may not be your color because it, that's all you see is fuchsia. Tone it down just a little bit, but pop a color, even in your shoes, by the way. Accessorize. Good tips. One very other quick question because this is a challenge that I have when I go to networking events. I mean, we're women, we have a purse. Then we might have a glass of wine. And then we might have some business cards and then we might have something else. How, what do we do with all that stuff so that we're not fumbling and dropping things and getting in a mess so that we can hand that business card over smoothly, still hold the glass of wine and still have the purse? Just a quick tip on that. <laughs> My quick tip is, if you have pockets, put your business cards in your pocket. Good if tip. you don't have pockets, then make, maybe carry a smaller purse so you can put it under the arm, hold your glass of wine, and shake hands at the same time. <laughs> so when you have to look for a card, for, it's not that hard. Just make sure your cards are handy. Great, wonderful, Dawn. Um, so we ran another poll, um, and based, it's sort of piggybacking off, asking if our attendees thought that networking was valuable, which most of them said it was. Uh, we asked, um, has business or job opportunities or promotions come your way through networking? And 70%, seventy-seven percent of our attendees said yes. So you know, it works. It works, and you know, networking is really a great tool. Um, on, on many levels and obviously for that end result which would be for making creating business or finding that new career. Um, ladies, I'd like to go back to our key focus for today and ask you one last question each. Um, make this fun and fast and based off your own experience. Um, first I'd like to ask Marty, um, when is the right time to network? Boy, I think the question is when is not the right time to network? Probably <laughs> okay. then not the right time to network is when you're with your husband or your girlfriend or someone who would be offended because you're always like looking somewhere else and paying attention to someone else. So when I, whenever you want to focus on the here and now moments, a personal moment, not the right time to network. But anytime else, keep your eyes and ears open because as Star said, you never know what's around the corner when you meet someone new. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Thanks a lot. Leanne. How should oh, we I'm gonna work? Say, oh, yeah. How? How? The how. So you're, I always talk about mindsets. I can't say enough about mindset. It's adopt that relationship mindset. Make sure you're going into the, the event or the online space um, with that purpose of developing genuine, real, win-win, long-term relationships. That's number one. Um, and if you can do that, I think it actually reduces the fear and stress around doing the networking. It just has a totally different focus, and I dare say it'll be a lot more fun. And then lastly, I really and we touched on this somewhere before, I really think you need to make a plan for how much you're going to network and where you're going to network. How often do you need to do it for your needs, for your business needs? And then next step is when you're going to a networking event, uh, make sure you make a commitment about what you're going to do there. Make a commitment to talk to, say, five people. Say, I'm going to initiate a conversation with five people, and I'm going to get to know, genuinely, five people and shine my light for them. So just be real purposeful and make commitments to yourself and plans before you go in. Thanks, Leanne. Wonderful tips. Dawn, last but not least, what to say, what not to say. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> First of all, when you go into a networking event, you always want to make eye contact with somebody. When you make eye contact with somebody, you can go up and shake their hand and introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Dawn Stebbing, 
and ask what their name is. If their name tag is on the right side, which is your right side here, um, they can, you can easily see that. So you can see their name. You can ask them what do they do, what brought them to the event, find out a little bit about them. What not to say is when they ask you what you do and you have maybe three different careers that you have in mind, do not talk about all three of them. They're not interesting. Talk about the one that means the most to you. And I know I hear this all the time, but I love all three and I'm good at all three. Doesn't matter. We don't know what you do when you tell me all three. So don't go on and on and on and on. The one tip here is to listen more and talk less. Thank you, Dawn. Um, great ladies. Great, great tips there. Um, we ran our last poll question and we asked the attendees what their biggest challenges were that they faced when networking. And um, interesting, 29% of our attendees said they don't know what to say. So hopefully that's changed after this conversation. 30% say they don't know who to network with. 3% uh, said they can't decide what to wear. So obviously that's not the biggest challenge of our attendees here today. And 39% said, all of the above. So, um, I mean, we really covered s some stuff in the short time, and we talked about mostly the in-person. Uh, we'll certainly come back to each chapter and talk about that online networking, because that's another important piece and has a bunch of other rules and regulations around that, about how to be proficient in that space. Um, and, uh, you know, you've really helped us, ladies, to improve our game and network like pros. And as we wrap up our um, weekly panel discussion, I also want to share with you our recommended reads from our panelists today. Uh, Marty recommended Networking for People Who Hate Networking by Devorah Zak. Dawn recommended How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And lastly, Leanne recommends Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Thank you, ladies. These are great choices. And thank you for your professional insight, tips, and tools on how we can better utilize networking to enhance our professional exposure. And also, thank you to our almost 1,300 uh, members who registered for our event today. I think that's the highest registration we've had so far. Um, and attendees only will be receiving a follow-up list of all members at the event today, so you can connect again um, on NEPW.com and continue to network. If any of our attendees have further questions for our speakers, please feel free to reach out. Their information is on today's PowerPoint and will also be listed in the post eChapter email. Also, all NEPW eChapters are recorded and saved on YouTube for you to find and watch again. A couple of final important announcements as we wrap up our eChapter event. Our next eChapter event will be held Wednesday, June 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern, and the topic is getting a seat at the table. Ladies, sign up today. The registration link is live on your screen now, so don't miss out. NAPW's upcoming in-person corporate networking events are as follows. Power networking events in San Jose, June 2nd, and in Houston, June 14th. And our two national summits will be held August 23rd in Los Angeles and October 8th in Washington, DC. So I look forward to seeing you all there. And look out for emails and social media posts to register for these upcoming events. And finally, ladies, post each chapter. Here are three things you should do to continue putting your NAPW membership to work. Connect with at least three members post each chapter. As I said, that attendee list will be coming your way. Make sure to sign up for the next eChapter. I hope you did that just now and future eChapters. And don't forget to take the post eChapter survey. Your feedback is very important to us and assists us in enhancing your member experience. Thank you, everyone, for another great eChapter. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our spotlights. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>